Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video I'll give you 10 reasons why you should be playing Diablo 4 Loot Reborn Season. If you are a returning player or think about getting the game, I think you'll have a good time. I'll give you 10 reasons why you should return to the game or pick it up, so I think this will be helpful for all the new players alike. These are uh, in no particular order by the way, so buckle up and let's do this. Number 1. Total affixes on gear have been reduced. Thank God for this. No more plus 10% damage to enemies that are standing on a single foot on a Friday night during a full moon. This thing alone adds so much to the game, it's unreal. Blizzard finally learned less is more in this case. Now it is easier than ever to scan your inventory for those good rolls because things got simpler. And there is a higher chance of obtaining an item that has the stats you actually want. Imagine that. Number 2. Blacksmiths required materials to perform services have been reduced. This was the shortest. Number 3. Codex of Power got a big change. Gone are the days when your inventory and stash got filled up and clogged by hundreds of aspects. Now they just go into the Codex of Power and can be used indefinitely. It's just a library that shows you the most powerful aspect versions you found. And now you can see an icon on a legendary that tells you that the aspect on it has a better role than what you have into your codex. So it's way easier to detect. At the end game, at some point, when you have thousands of salvage materials, you will salvage only these that give you an upgraded aspect and sell the rest for gold. Or at least this is how I do it. You can also mark aspects as favorites in Codex of Power. Number 4. Tempering is performed by any blacksmith in the world and allows you to add up to two affixes on your items. This is done through a reusable item that can drop from most content, temper manuals. These things come in different rarities, like the items themselves. If there is one drop on the floor that you already have, it's marked in a way so you don't pick it up. <laughs> I wish. This last one is how I wish it would be. They didn't add loot filters into the game yet, so... Back to tempering. Each manual contains a few affixes, and when you attach it on your item, one of these affixes is randomly picked. Affixes can be rerolled up to the item's temper reroll limit. Usually I manage to get what I want before I reach that limit, and that's a good thing, I think, because it sucks to waste a good rolled item, right? From ancestral items, I believe you can have two tempered affixes from different categories. This is pretty cool. It reminds me of Last Epoch in a way, but that game still has the best crafting system in my opinion. You can start tempering early by the way, as you'll have plenty of materials. Don't hold back until the end game, please. Go nuts from level 5 if you want. Number 5. Master working in Diablo 4 is a late game crafting system that upgrades your items using materials dropped inside the pit of artificers. We'll talk about this in a bit. It's an easy to grasp system that just improves the value of your current affixes by a set amount. There are 12 upgrade ranks and every 4 rank a single affix is massively upgraded. Other than that, all affixes increase by 5% each rank. I still didn't play with it too much, but it feels great. You can also reset the master working if you're not happy with how the upgrades turned out. Number 5. Hell Tides Reborn. Hell yeah! This feature alone is better than some of the early seasons entirely. It finally feels Blizzard made use of this cool open world they built. Hell Tide got huge upgrades. The first one we'll talk about is threat level. As you slay monsters, you generate threat, of course. The threat amount is determined by the difficulty of monsters and the frequency of which you secure tortured gifts within Helltide. If you die, the threat resets. There are three threat tiers. At tier 3, you will become Hellmark. Achieving maximum threat will get you ambushed by a lot of demons. It culminates with a Hellborn spawn. There are five variants of this, but I have no clue what's what during these ambushes because... <laughs> The screen is filled with loot and fix. The thing is, after you are ambushed by the Hellborn, your threat resets. Unholy blasphemy, a cursed ritual. Baneful hearts can be earned by opening tortured gifts, chests and can be used at the ritual location. And deposit three baneful hearts to begin the ritual and you'll be swarmed by Hell's minions. Usually there are players in the area, so it's fine. Those minions tend to stay alive for, I don't know, a millisecond. 
or something. The ritual peaks with the arrival of the Blood Maiden. You can do this from level 1 by the way, so yeah. And it's very easy at the beginning as the world scales with you. It gets harder later on, but from my experience with it, it gets easier as you obtain more and more power. So the difficulty curve starts somewhere here, then it goes up, and then it comes back down. During Helltide events, a new elixir called Profane Mind Cage has a chance to drop. Consuming it increases the level of Helltide monsters by 10, and the cinder drop rates will be boosted. Number 6. The Pit of Artificers this is a cool new dungeon and you can enter it by activating the obelisk in Kerrigar once you collect enough rune shard. You get a quest to complete a tier 46 nightmare dungeon. After you do it, you start collecting rune shard during various endgame activities. When you activate the obelisk, it will send you to the pit. Your goal will be to slay enough monsters before the 15 minute timer runs out. Each player that removes time from the clock. The first death removes 30 seconds, the second death removes 60 seconds, and the third and subsequent deaths will remove 90 seconds. If you slay enough monsters, a portal will appear, taking you to the boss arena. Killing the boss before the timer expires will grant you master working materials and unlock the next tier of the pit. Killing the boss with 4 to 6 minutes to spare grants you an additional tier unlock. Killing the boss with 6 or more minutes to spare grants you 2 additional tier unlocks. The pit has hundreds of tiers of difficulty. If the mastery timer expires before you finish running through the pit, you'll still receive loot, but you won't receive any master working materials. So just do a level you are comfortable with, don't go too high if you struggle. Number 7. Fight with the Iron Wolves. This is so rewarding as you gain ranks with them. You do that by just participating in Helltide areas. Those caches are so rewarding. Anyway, you find Sude the Anvil who is an Iron Wolf field commander located in an Iron Wolves encampment in the northeastern part of ragged coastline of Yejistan. It annoys me I can't see any icon of the map if I'm not in the area, so I sometimes don't know where I'm need to go. I wish all icons would show up on the map when you zoom in the area, regardless of you're here or not. I digress. Number 8. Seasonal Journey and b <coughs> Bullshit uh, Pass Rewards Just like in every season in Diablo 4, players can earn various rewards as they progress the season journey and... <laughs> <coughs> the, the pass. The season journey is broken down into chapters, filled with different objectives as you progress through the season. Completing one of the objectives will grant players a small reward, and completing a full chapter will grant good rewards that are usually ahead of your power curve, meaning you'll often find a good piece of gear, especially weapons that give you a lot of DP DPS increase if numbers are high. The <coughs> pass is just the usual bullshit I'm not going to bother with. One thing I'll say though, and this becomes more and more apparent as I watch the library of armors and stuff inside the shop. The things you find in the game by just playing it pale in comparison with some of the things you can just buy with money. Yeah. <laughs> Shame on you Blizzard I guess. But whatever, move on. This shit is now the industry standard because we normalized it like morons. So. Shame on us, after all, I guess. Number 9. The joy of loot hunting makes me jump from one activity to another seamlessly this time around. My enjoyment of the game didn't slowly fade out after level 70 like it did the release. Because the leveling is going at a decent speed and at every milestone you unlock new things and ways to boost your power. This is what happens when, when I log into the game, right? I'm doing a, I don't know, nightmare dungeon. I see world boss on the map in 5 minutes. I go there, sneeze in its general direction, it dies, collect the loot and realize I got 6 out of 10 whispers. I check the hell tide, it's on for another 30 minutes in this area. So I go get the remaining 4 whispers, then go to the key of whispers and collect my reward. Then go back to the hell tide uh, because slaying demons never felt so good in this game. While in there I find a really cool weapon, fuck, now I want to do some masterworks on it to boost its power. But I have no materials, so I go around some pits to get some. And this doesn't even touch on bosses and other uh, stuff I have yet to experience. 
but I look forward to that. My gear is too bad for Lilith, for example, so I do way too little damage. But I have a lot of room to grow even without touching any of those bosses. Number 10. If you love playing minion necromancers in games like I do, this should be a very good reason to do it because I feel the build is at its peak. It can only go downhill from here. Gone are the days where your minions hit like a dry cloth. So, yeah, this is pretty much it, guys. Number 12. Ray Tracing and DLSS. If you haven't played the game since release, like me, you may have missed the fact that Ray Trace Shadows and Reflections are now available to enable in the settings menu, along with some extra goodies like individual options to adjust the quality of Ray Trace Shadows and Reflections and checkboxes to enable ray traced foliage and ray traced particles. It looks great and I have no idea what specs you need for it. I just maxed out everything. I love seeing Diablo 4 is getting better. It took them only one year to get here, but yeah, it's still not perfect. <laughs> no, 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 no. I can think of a lot of things that are annoying. I'll try to list a few to illustrate my point. Why we still can't save build loadouts? Blizzard? Anyone? It's annoying as hell if you want to respect. It takes you like 30 minutes, perhaps even more. So we need build presets and gear sets that are stored separately so you can salvage by mistake some piece of equipment. Just make it happen, Blizzard. Please. Uh, we still don't have a blood filter yet because Blizzard thinks our small little brains implode if we are given that option, you know? We believe we want it, but... <laughs> <laughs> we actually don't, right? Yeah. What the? The inventory is small. It's unchanged from the release. Just make it happen. At least two more rows, please. You get less and uh, more relevant loot now, but in Helltides especially, I often need to waste time and go back to town and sell and salvage stuff. Or just dump them in an empty tab for later sorting. It's annoying. There is still backtracking in the dungeons, and it's annoying because there are a lot of dungeons and it takes a while until you learn the layouts. Don't think they can fix this without some sort of dynamic objectives or something. I don't know. Gems are still wasting inventory space for some reason. The entire gem crafting could use some improvements. You craft gems with some fragments you'll find all over the place. Well, once created, those gems should stay somewhere in the collections, like aspects in Codex of Power, for example. I'm just saying. And you can craft the jeweler the same way as you do now, but you don't have them in your inventory anymore. All. Consumables tab is still <laughs> way too small. I had to store a lot of stuff inside my stash only to make some room. No idea why I have to manage that shit as in my view I shouldn't go to that tab unless I want to use an elixir or an incense or start a night nightmare dungeon. While we are at this I'd like to see the gear of the sigil without having to hover over it as they don't stack so they don't have that number in the corner reserved or anything. Just increase the inventory size guys. Two more lines that should do it I think. Make it happen. Just do it. I said this already, but make it so you can see all the icons on the map, even when you're not in that specific location. World bosses are a big joke. Just some loot piñatas. This is a missed opportunity, guys. Do something with them. They are cool. They're a joke. So yeah, there is still work to be done with this game, but itemization is mostly okay. And we all know that plays a big part of any respectable ARPG. So, in my view at least, there is no better time to pick Diablo 4 up. I wish I played Diablo 4 for the first time this season, as it's great so far, and I'm not bored. Check out this last Epoch video. I still think that game does some things better than Diablo, but the gap is closing, and it's closing fast. This shows you how fast an unlimited budget company versus an indie company can deliver stuff. So thank you for watching and until next time, take care and see ya.